Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we were actually joined today uh, by Elliot Wellenbach. He's Senior Vice President over at Direction Institutional ETF Sales and Capital Markets Strategist. Uh, Elliot, how are you doing? Good, Jacob. Uh, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. You know, there's uh, quite a bit going on, actually. I, I want to start off first um, just kind of looking at what you got over here at DPST. Uh, this is the daily regional banks bull three times shares. Now, of course, we had a lot of stuff come out with earnings, uh, of course, with Bancorp and uh, Citibank. I'm just curious if you can give us a little insight in, uh, you know, this is the three times leveraged uh, bull ETF. Um, you, you know, it's funny, before we even begin, I, I want to say um, it, it, it's been funny. Years ago, um, I had traded uh, in gush and drip, and I had, you know, I was a young guy. And, uh, you know, trying to learn and get my footing in it. And I, I really found that using these were just, uh, it really changed kind of my strategies, which I thought was really impressive. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yes. Most of our products are leveraged and inverse uh, short term tactical trading tools. Very powerful. Um, you know, very important to monitor. Um, but yeah, no, as you mentioned, regional banks, uh, I mean, the financials, uh, you know, kind of kick off Q1 earnings. Uh, they mm. did uh, last week. Um, and, uh, you know, really Q1 earnings season has continued this week. Um, the regional banks, uh, about 40 percent of that basket um, is reporting this week. Um, and as you mentioned, DPST is our triple leveraged ETF um, off of the regional bank select sector. Um, and, you know, we've seen kind of, uh, you know, mixed earnings coming out of the regional banks. Mm -hmm. uh, the NII, uh, you know, the net uh, interest income uh, is definitely something that has been watched um, with higher rates, especially with the regional banks being, you know, a little bit more sensitive uh, to uh, higher rates uh, in their core business as opposed to, you know, some of the, you know, larger, uh, you know, banks and uh, financials uh, that have, you know, broader, uh, you know, areas of their business that, sure. that they can rely on where the regional banks really um, you know, are impacted by that uh, NII. Uh, so it's been, it's definitely been interesting. And, um, you know, even in the the broader financials that you mentioned, you know, we've seen Goldman uh, City, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, Bank of America, they've already all reported. Um, and, in, and those are all part of the financial select sector. So those are the you know, the larger uh, financial banks um, and financial uh, companies within the U.S., as opposed to the regionals that are going to be your smaller regional players. Um, but that basket as well, um, we have a triple leveraged um, uh, ETF off of that, uh, the financial select sector, FAS, and a triple inverse as well, FAZ. Yeah. Um, and that basket's already reported as well, 40 percent uh, so far. Uh, starting off Friday of last week and then through this week. And we've in, even see, uh, seen, um, you know, the the higher rate environment impacting, uh, you know, their net at interest income, uh, even when they have, you know, businesses that, um, you know, can help support, um, you know, their broader business when, um, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, looking at, um, you know, loans um, and, you know, uh, also just, uh, you know, that interest that they're, they have to pay back to, you uh, to, uh, you know, people holding uh, money Certainly. with them. Yeah, and, and uh, taking a look, too, at the financial bull and bear. Again, that's FAS and FAZ. Um, but you can see here, too, obviously, the top 10 holdings. You got Berkshire, JP Morgan, Visa, MasterCard, and Bank, and so on. And then you have these index sector weightings as well. And this will, you know, this is the case for all the leveraged shares, uh, leveraged ETFs that Direction provides as well. Um, and so I had a actually pretty good time sitting here and uh, looking through a lot of these uh, before the show as well. Um, you know, into that as well, we had United Healthcare, of course, uh, report earnings as well. Uh, they did all right. And you guys have a healthcare bull three times uh, leverage as well. I mean, what's the major composite in that? It's Lilly, United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson. Of course, uh, Lilly coming out with some interesting news, too, uh, with ZepBound being uh, effective actually for sleep apnea, too. So if you could tell us a little bit about Cure and kind of what we're looking at with that. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, that's another, uh, you know, larger percentage of uh, the healthcare select sector um, or, uh, you know, triple leverage ETF cure um, that uh, is off of that. Um, you know, it's been uh, a little bit mixed uh, for the healthcare sector. Sure. Approximately 20% of uh, that basket is reported uh, so far this week. 
Um, you know, we saw Abbott, uh, you know, that's part of that uh, uh, index. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat, uh, raised their annual profit forecast. And as you mentioned, uh, Eli Lilly, uh, they're, <laughs> they're not reporting for uh, another week and a half. Uh, so that's that's uh, the largest uh, holding within uh, Cure and in that sector. Um, and it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, you know, a lot has been going on the past year with, uh, you know, the weight loss drugs, um, you know, the demand for that. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, sales and growth in that uh, space for not only Eli Lilly, but, um, you know, a handful of those, you know, large uh, healthcare uh, names in that sector, um, how that's going to impact their earnings. Because um, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, kind of hype around that and also, uh, you know, demand from the consumer as well. Absolutely. And, you know, at, at the, the price that Eli Lilly trades at right now, you know, we're at 749 a share. This is a great way, uh, especially with Cure, to get exposure to, I mean, listen, Eli Lilly, I think, is, is poised fantastically, right? ZepBound is even going through a supply uh, kind of choke right now, um, which is only going to drive up the cost for it. And a lot of times I, you know, I mean, something like 749 a share for Eli Lilly is a little bit prohibitive for a lot of people. And so to get exposure to that stock in something like this, um, you know, I, I think is, is fantastic as well. That's, that's what I find so neat uh, with, with a lot of these uh, leveraged ETFs. Um, yep. Great way to trade around uh, earnings short term. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, if you're looking for concentrated exposure but don't want to be trading that, you know, just that individual name, you know, it's a great way to get a basket, um, you know, through a totally. you know, leverage ETF there for short term trading. And, you know, one of the big things, of course, you know, Tom O'Brien, he, uh, you know, runs his newsletter and everything. We've been looking at gold a lot, right? And, uh, Direction has, of course, Nugget, which is a three times um, uh, long, and then uh, Dust as well. And so I'm kind of curious what you guys are looking at with that. Obviously, gold has had this kind of, you know, I would say in recent times, uh, meteoric rise, uh, which has been fantastic for all gold holders. And, you know, Nugget has returned pretty fantastically for that whole run. Let's take a look at the chart here as well. And this is on a one-year. I mean, we're trading up three, you know, 38, 28 right now, up 2.9% for the day. And I mean, seriously, look, right? This is May 1st, um, you know, excuse me, March 1st of uh, the beginning of this year. And then we've just seen it really, really kind of follow gold on the way up as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, gold has been kind of, uh, you know, earlier this year hitting all-time highs. Um, and, you know, uh, another thing that has really impacted uh, as of recent is uh, kind of some geopolitical conflict uh, going on in the Middle oh. East right now, um, yeah. kind of that flight to safety trade, um, especially in the gold. And as you mentioned, our, you know, we have, uh, you know, uh, leveraged gold miner ETF. So not the actual physical gold, but uh, the gold mining equities. Uh, Nugget and Dust are 2X in the gold miners. And then we do have our junior gold miners yes. 2X funds as well. J-N-U-G, J-Nug, and J-D-S-T, the inverse there. Um, so, no, definitely, um, you know, we've seen gold uh, or the gold miners lag at uh, gold just a little bit. Definitely, but with, you know, the spot price going up, it usually they follow really closely behind. So, Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. This has been fantastic, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, Jacob, thank you for having me. Fantastic. Take care now. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.